This is a presentation of Alaska Diesel Electric. The manufacturer of Lugger marine propulsion engines and Northern Lights generator sets. We present There is logic behind DC logic. Hello, my name is Mark Johnson. Every generator set has two sides to its electric personality. The AC power it generates and the DC power which controls the set. This program will help you better understand, diagnose, and repair the DC systems on Northern Lights marine and industrial generator sets. Let's start with a quick rundown of the four principles we apply to every product we design here at Alaska Diesel Electric. Universal use. We design a system that works, then we use it on as many models as possible. Simplicity. Every component we can eliminate in the design process is one that won't fail in the field. Reliability. Every system must work regardless of the environment. Our customers have paid for a set that runs every time they hit that start button. Ease of repair. Make everything we build easy to fix with a minimum of special tools. Our marine sets must meet these criteria. That's why every Northern Lights marine set from 5 to 700 kW uses a DC system based on relays and copper wire. Printed circuit boards are fine for non-critical applications. The television you're watching is full of them. We even use them on some of our sophisticated auto-everything industrial generator set switchgear. But for marine applications where the environment is hostile and you can't walk home, we stick with reliable relays. This is true for our lugger marine propulsion engines as well. Relay logic systems cost more to manufacture, but they dramatically reduce the cost of field service and replacement parts. Not all the standards we follow are self-imposed. We follow the ABYC, American Boat and Yacht Council standards for marine applications. These standards include grades of material, wire colors, and some design recommendations. We also build sets to Lloyd's, Norske Virtus, ABS, and other international standards for special applications. The DC electrical systems on these sets, from the simplest to the most complex, all start with a DC wiring diagram. These diagrams are available from your factory branch and they're in the back of the operator's manual. Now let's look at how the wiring diagram is organized, beginning with the title block. The title block has a wealth of information, from the list of the models covered to the drawing's revision history. The drawing number, in this case C1611, should be used when communicating with us here at Alaska Diesel Electric. The wiring diagram itself is divided into four sections by vertical dotted lines. First section is the control panel. It includes the engine control switch, the shutdown and bypass and preheat switch, and the engine instruments and their lights. The next section is the wire harness between the engine and the control panel. It lists all of the wires with their colors. The double arrows denote plug-in pin terminals. The numbers in the boxes are the terminal strip numbers. The next section is the relay board. The relay board itself is located in the generator J box. The relay board includes a circuit breaker and four relays that control the DC circuitry. Lastly, we have the engine section. This is the symbol for the 12 volt battery and the battery ground. The wiring diagram also has installation notes. Here we're telling the installer that the maximum battery cable length is five feet. The starter solenoid, the starter motor, battery charging alternator, fuel rack solenoid. This is also known as a stop solenoid. All of our generator sets have stop solenoids that are energized to run. Oil pressure switch and engine temperature switch for the shutdown system. Glow plugs are preheater elements. The engine block ground and the oil pressure sender and the engine temperature sender for the panel gauges. 
Most of our marine sets have senders installed, even if the standard panel doesn't have gauges. This allows the customer the option of upgrading his panel at any time by simply plugging in a new panel. If additional shutdowns or monitoring options are ordered, the switches and senders are also in the engine section of the drawing. Now let's look at the relay board section of the drawing along with its actual components. This is the circuit breaker. It prevents a fire if a short should occur. It protects the set's entire DC system, including the engine wiring, the control panel, and the wiring harness. We use a breaker instead of a replaceable fuse. There's nothing worse than losing power at sea just because you ran out of fuses. The system has four relays. The start relay, marked with a nice big SR. The shutdown relay, SDR. The run relay, RR. And the preheat relay, PHR. The circle symbolizes the relay's coil. The double lines represent the relay's contacts. These contacts close when the relay is energized. Note the SDR contacts have a slash through them. This means the contacts are normally closed and open when the relay is energized. The numbers on either side of the coil and the contacts refer to the numbers stamped on the bottom of the relay. This is a diode. Diodes are electronic check valves which allow electricity to flow only one way. You'll find this symbol on the actual diode. The arrow in the symbol tells us which way the power can flow. Between the relay board and the control panel is the harness section. Note the wiring colors. Again, these follow the standards set by the American Boat and Yacht Council. These numbers match terminal numbers on the relay board. The letter is a plug-in pin number. On some sets, a control panel harness with a plug-in is attached to the terminal strip. The plug-in has eight pins denoted by the letters A through H. The plug is water resistant and is rarely a source of problems as long as it is correctly installed. View AA, shown here, is the male side of the plug while BB is the female side of the plug. That brings us to the control panels. We offer a wide range of DC control panels for our marine generators. The simplest panel we offer is a Series 1 start-stop panel. The Series 1B is a start-stop panel with an hour meter. It is standard equipment on many of our sets. The Series 3 Compact, or S3C, has engine controls and four engine monitoring gauges. The Series 3 has the same features as the S3C and is available in a flush mount or a gasketed NEMA box for engine room installations. The Series 4 flush and box mount panels have engine controls and gauges plus AC instruments to monitor the set's voltage, frequency, and amperage output. It is also the foundation for many of our custom control panels for auto start and parallel operation. Now let's compare the S3C to the drawing. We start, naturally, at the start stop switch and the shutdown bypass and preheat switch. The same part number switch is used for both functions. The switches look slightly different on the drawing. That's because the shutdown bypass preheat switch has a jumper wire between its contacts which allow it to be moved in either direction for operation. Finally, we have four engine gauges with their gauge lights. So that's the wiring diagram. Now let's move on to how this system actually works. The heart of our system is this little jewel. It's a single pole, double throw relay. We use four relays and they're all exactly the same part. This means the owner only has to carry one part on board and the dealer only has to stock one part number. Remember our universal use philosophy. There's an added advantage to relays being identical. In an emergency situation, the owner can take one relay from a non-critical circuit like preheating and move it over into a critical circuit like starting. This feature can help a long-range cruiser who is far from a part source get home in comfort. These relays are nearly bulletproof. And compared to a printed circuit board, if one does fail, it's inexpensive to replace. Please remember, 
don't use a screwdriver or other metal tool to remove a relay. It might short it out. Just grab it with your fingers and wiggle it free. Okay, so relays are the neatest thing since sliced bread, but what do they really do? Let's cut the top off one and see how it works. The relay has three parts, the coil, the contacts, and the terminals. When the relay is at rest, contacts 30 and 87A are closed. When energized, the 30 and 87A contact is opened and the 30 and 87 contact is closed. At rest, energized. At rest, energized. It was hard to see the contacts moving. Let's pretend my fingers are contacts. At rest, energized. At rest, energized. This relay function is utilized throughout the DC system, and depending on how we wire the relay, we can use it to either open or close a circuit. The relay coil only draws a small amount of current, but it controls the function of contacts that can handle 20 to 40 amps of current. So by mounting the relays on the set, where all the large current draws are, we can keep our high current wire runs short. And we can also control the relay's coil from a long distance away using a low current and light gauge wire. Relays also let us plug in as many stop start panels as the customer wants, plus two control panels with full instrumentation. Now let's trace out the relay circuits using a simplified wiring diagram. As we discuss each of the circuits, keep in mind that this is a negative ground system. Also remember that we use the ground half of the circuit to control the stop, start, and emergency shutdown functions. Using the ground as control is unusual, but it lets us have multiple stations, unlimited fault senders for safety shutdowns, and it's safer. Okay, let's dive into the circuits. This will go fast and might be confusing, but remember that's why VCRs have rewind buttons. Just keep playing each section over and over until you get it nailed. First, let's go over the shutdown bypass and preheat functions. Push the shutdown bypass and preheat switch and several things happen simultaneously and continue as long as the switch is held on. Preheaters, if the engine has them, are energized. The fuel rack solenoid is energized. The DC battery charging alternator is excited. All safety shutdown switches are bypassed. The panel gauges and lights are energized. Let's go over each event individually, beginning with the preheaters. The red line denotes the part of the DC system that is hot at all times. This, of course, assumes that the DC circuit breaker and any battery switches are closed. When the operator pushes the shutdown bypass and preheat switch, the power goes through the white wire, energizes the preheat relay, which closes the preheat contacts, which allows power to go to the elements, and the preheat elements heat up. Now to energize the fuel rack solenoid and the alternator. Close the switch, power goes through diode number two, and it energizes the run relay coil. This closes the run relay contacts, allowing power to the fuel rack solenoid, which pulls the injection pump fuel rack into the run position. Power also goes to the DC alternator, exciting its field so it's ready to produce power. Now let's trace the shutdown bypass circuit. Close the switch. Power goes through diode number two to the run relay coil. The energized coil shuts the run relay contacts, which allows power to the shutdown relay. The shutdown relay is grounded, shown here in blue, by the low oil pressure switch. Power energizes the shutdown relay. The contacts of the shutdown relay open. Remember, they're normally closed. So because the shutdown bypass preheat switch is pushed, 
the safety switches can affect the run relay. In effect, the shutdown system is bypassed. Finally, we have the gauge power circuit. Again, close the switch. Through diode 2, run relay coil is energized. Run relay contacts shut, allows power to the engine gauges and instruments. The control panel is grounded from the engine ground. Remember, all these functions happen at once. So when the operator pushes the shutdown bypass switch, the system instantly looks like this. Now let's move on to the start circuit. While holding the shutdown bypass preheat switch, the operator closes the start switch, which grounds the start relay coil, closing the start relay contacts, allowing power to go to the starter solenoid, and the starter is energized. That one's pretty simple. The next one's a little more complicated. The run circuit is what we call a latching circuit. In other words, as long as the run circuit is complete, latched, the engine will run. If the circuit is broken by either pushing the stop button or an activated safety shutdown switch, the circuit becomes unlatched and the engine stops. Let's go through it step by step. The operator holds a shutdown bypass preheat switch, which arms the system. Everything is ready for starting. He pushes the start button, which energizes the starter. Because there is no oil pressure, the shutdown relay is energized and its contacts are open. Power cannot reach the run relay through the open SDR contacts. But since the shutdown bypass preheat switch is held closed, power can reach the run relay through diode 2. This keeps the run relay contacts closed. As soon as the oil pressure builds, the oil pressure switch opens and breaks the connection between the shutdown relay and ground. The shutdown relay has lost its ground and is no longer energized. Its contacts now close. This allows power to go through diode 1 and to the run relay. The operator can now release the shutdown bypass switch because the bypass function is no longer needed. The run relay's contacts will remain closed because of this connection. The run relay is now latched, and it will remain latched as long as the shutdown relay's contacts are closed, and they will remain closed as long as the system is latched. It's sort of a catch-22 of DC logic. The only thing that can unlatch the system is if a ground is restored to the shutdown relay, either by a closing safety switch or by the stop switch on the control panel. Which brings us to the stop functions. Here the diagram shows a unit in the latched run mode. The run relay is energized and its contacts are closed. The shutdown relay has no ground, so it is not energized and its contacts are also closed. If the operator presses the stop button on the control panel, or if one of the fault switches closes, The ground is reconnected to the shutdown relay, and it is energized. This opens the SDR contacts, de-energizing the run relay, which opens the run relay contacts. Power is now lost to the fuel rack solenoid 
fuel is cut off to the engine, and the engine shuts down. So now you understand how the system is designed to work. But as we all know, even the best of equipment can fail. And with electrical equipment, it's not always obvious where the fault lies. That's where your troubleshooting skills come into play. The first rule of troubleshooting is do the simple things first. Second, work upstream. Start at the beginning of the circuit and work your way to the end. Check each element of the circuit. Eventually you'll find a possible problem, repair it, and if that doesn't fix the fault, move on to the next element. Third, never assume. Check everything. And fourth, use the diagnostic tools at hand. The DC control panel can give you lots of clues to solve the problem. So can a simple test light, and of course, an ohmmeter. Let's go over some of the most common failures, the symptoms and the repairs. The simplest, you press the start button and nothing happens. The engine won't turn over. Remember, start with the simple solutions. Check the battery condition using the voltmeter on the control panel. Simply push down on the shutdown bypass preheat switch and read the battery condition on the voltmeter. Check to see if the battery switch is turned on. Check the battery and the ground connections. Has the DC circuit breaker tripped? See how we are working upstream using the wiring diagram as a troubleshooting chart. Move on to the stop start switch. Are all the wires connected and tight? If not, fix it. Is power arriving at the starter solenoid? If not, check the start relay. If you're working on a marine set with wet exhaust system, check to see if the engine is hydraulically locked with water in its cylinders. To do this, turn the engine over with a wrench on the crankshaft pulley. If you can't turn it over by hand, the vessel may have exhaust system problems. See our Don't Drown Me tape for more information. We've checked everything up to the starter. Now you can begin to worry about the starter and its solenoid. If the engine turns over but won't start, check the following. Is the shutdown bypass preheat switch connected and is the bypass system working correctly? Is power arriving to the fuel rack solenoid? Are the preheaters working? And if not, check the preheat relay. Remember, overcranking sets with wet exhaust systems will fill the cylinders with water. Check the following if the engine starts, but it dies as soon as you release the shutdown bypass switch. Remember, start simple. If there's no oil in the engine, there won't be any oil pressure, so the run relay won't latch. This is one of the few electrical problems you can solve with a dipstick. Or maybe diode number one is shorted open and the run relay can't be energized. A faulty low oil pressure switch or high water temperature switch is stuck closed. Or perhaps the shutdown relay is faulty. If that's the case, replace the relay. Here's what to do if the owner says his hour meter and instrument lights stay on. Momentarily engage the shutdown bypass switch. If the run indicator light Instrument lights and hour meter keep working after you've released the switch. The oil pressure switch is stuck open. We call this the phantom starter. If the starter mysteriously engages without anyone pushing the start button, there could be a short in the wiring harness. This usually comes from water in an incorrectly installed plug-in. Installed correctly, the lip of the male plug acts as a water shedding umbrella. Install it with the lip up and the umbrella becomes a funnel, gathering water into the plug. Eventually the plug shorts out and the starter is engaged until the starter fails or the battery goes dead. Replace the plug in and make sure it's correctly installed. If the engine had a wet exhaust system, make sure the engaged starter did not fill the cylinders with water. Remember, a diode only lets electricity run one way, but it can fail two ways. If a diode shorts and remains permanently closed, the power can run through it both ways. Or two, the diode shorts and stays open, and no power can go either direction. Each problem has special results, depending on where the diode is used. Let's start with the diode number two, between the preheat relay and the run relay. If the diode shorts closed, the engine runs, but the preheat elements remain energized and will eventually burn out. If it shorts open, 
The preheaters are energized when the shutdown bypass is pushed. The starter turns the engine over, but it will not start because the run relay and the fuel rack solenoid is not energized. Now to the diode number one between the shutdown relay and the run relay. If it remains open, the engine will only stay running until the operator releases the shutdown bypass and preheat switch. Once released, the run relay loses power and it will not stay latched. The fuel rack solenoid is no longer energized and the engine stops. You can test the diodes in place. First isolate the system from the battery with a battery switch or by removing the positive battery cable. Then take out the shutdown relay and the run relay to prevent alternate current paths. Place the ohm meter negative lead on the cathode end of the diode. It's marked with a bar. Place the positive lead on the anode end of the diode. The anode end is marked with a triangle. Your meter should show continuity. If it doesn't, the diode is open. Reverse the ohm meter leads and you should have no continuity. If you do, the diode is shorted closed. Well, that's a quick rundown on our DC relay logic on Northern Lights generators. I hope you found it helpful. If you're interested in adding more depth to your DC knowledge, we recommend you pick up a copy of Getting Started in Electronics by Forrest Mims at your local Radio Shack store. If you have any questions or hot DC troubleshooting tips you want to pass along to your fellow service people, send them to us here at the factory, and we'll include them in a future service bulletin. The address is coming up at the end of the program. Thanks for watching, and remember, always keep your run relay latched. This program was produced by Alaska Diesel Electric. We manufacture Northern Lights marine and industrial generator sets from 5 to 750 kilowatts, and lugger marine engines from 60 to 1300 horsepower. Providing the world with marine and industrial power systems is our business, our only business. Questions or comments on this program's content and orders for additional copies may be sent to this address.